everybody, this is Buddha Sean here. Today we're talking about electronegativity. So what exactly is that? It's a chemical property that describes the tendency of an atom or molecule to attract electrons towards itself. So you can think of this as how much desire does the atom or molecule have to attract an electron to its valence shell. So we do have a trend on the periodic table and the trend is going to be increasing in electronegativity as we go up and over to the right. In other words, we can draw an arrow that's pointed up to the right hand corner. It would mean the same thing. Notice that there is a big X through the noble gases. And that's because the noble gases do not have electronegativity. Um, it's just not existent for them. Why? Because they have a full octet already. They have no reason at all to um, have an attraction for an electron. They're already full. They have no need for any more electrons. So here is the trend, because remember, it is a trend. So there's always exceptions to the rules. So I wanted to kind of show you the fade effect from going from low electronegativity all the way up to high electronegativity. Remember, noble gases are gonna be excluded here. Um, and you can see that there's a few exceptions to the rules happening, but the trend is there. Now let's talk about why. Okay, so as we go across the periodic table through like, down the period, well not down the period, across the period rather, uh, we are going to have more and more protons, which means more and more electrons. So as we get over to having five, six, seven valence electrons, those atoms are going to be increasing um, its chances or increasing its desire to get an electron. It really wants to accept electrons in so it can get a full octet. It does not want any to go away. It just wants to accept those electrons. So therefore, they're going to have a very high electronegativity. Uh, but if we go to the left of the periodic table towards the metals or the metallic-like um, uh, elements on the periodic table, we're going to end up with a lower valence electron count, like three, two, one. Well, those really want to become cations, right? So they want to give those electrons away they definitely do not want any electrons. They already want to give the way the ones they have. So this is going to have a very low electronegativity because they're already trying to give away theirs, not trying to take any other ones. So they have no kind of attraction of electronegativity to get more electrons in their valence shell. All right, now let's talk about going down the period. In other words, down the periodic table. And as you can see, as we go down, we do have that snowman look effect to it. We do get a larger atom as we go down. And the bigger the atom, the less attraction you're gonna have. Your protons are in your nucleus. And if you have a small atom, it's a very small distance away from those electrons. And remember, they're gonna kind of pull tight and your atom shrinks the more and more you have as you're going across anyway, right? But as you go down, your atom is gonna get larger. Every period means an additional energy level. So here we have two, then three, then four, and you can see it increases every single time. So it's gonna be a greater distance from that nucleus to your valence shell, and it's gonna have a hard time attracting another electron that's even farther away from that just because of the, the sheer um, size of your atom. It's gonna be a long distance. Therefore, it's gonna be minimal attraction of that positive and negative going on there. All right, what I want you to do is I want you to give some a try. So go ahead and pause your video here and I want you to put these in order from highest to lowest electronegativity. All right, pause. All right, let's go ahead and check the answer. So I went ahead and I outlined these for you on the periodic table and you can see that our highest electronegativity is gonna be fluorine and then chlorine, and then we're gonna come over here to sodium and then potassium. Let's try another one. All right, put these in order from highest to lowest electronegativity. Pause your video. All right, let's check it out. So you can see these are all non-metals this time, and we're gonna go ahead and look at fluorine, of course, as our highest electronegativity, and then we're going to oxygen, chlorine, and then sulfur being our very lowest. Remember, you can draw that same arrow in the upper right-hand diagonal, and that may help you too. All right, go ahead and put these in order from highest to lowest electronegativity. Go ahead and pause. 
Let's check out the answer. This one was kind of tricky, right? So in all truth, fluorine is still the highest and then chlorine after that. Neon and argon, they are both noble gases and the noble gases do not have electronegativity. So I didn't even add them on here, okay? Uh, now that's just a little food for thought because they do throw in some noble gases on tests and quizzes, you guys. So don't be fooled by that. All right. On average, which family would have the lowest electronegativity and which family would have the greatest electronegativity? Go ahead and pause. All right. Let's go ahead and check out the answer. So our um, greatest electronegativity is of course going to be the halogens. Our halogens are going to want to accept that electron. And then our lowest um, you're going to argue this, right? Uh, so the alkali metals have the least electronegativity of the families. However, it can be argued that it is noble gas because noble gases do not even have an electronegativity. You're going to need to see what your teacher is going to put on a test. If they're counting those noble gases or if they're not counting those noble gases, um, some scientists call it zero or some scientists say that it doesn't exist of electronegativity for noble gases. So see which one they're doing so you know the answers for your test. I hope this was helpful, you guys. I will see you all next time. Bye, everybody.